lower portion of the wall. David, uh, good luck with that, but that's who you need to call. You need to get a couple of bids from a couple of uh, special contractors to retrofit a wheat screed onto uh, that wall. Sometimes, sometimes, people have been uh, lucky, and I'm not going to recommend this uh, officially just because it's not standards and practices, but sometimes people have taken a concrete saw and actually scored, made a score cut in their stucco a couple of inches off of their concrete patios, and that score cut I itself starts to serve, that notch starts to serve as a wheat tree. Sometimes I've seen that work and resolve the problem, but I don't want to promise you that it will when uh, the wheat tree is the code and the industry standard uh, material for finishing that off. So there you go. David, good luck with that, my friend. All right, folks, when we come back, let's uh, dive back into the mystery of the contemporary home. I'm going to make it all make sense to you. I'm so glad you joined me this morning. So much more to come. You're home with Dean Sharp, the house whisperer on KFI. What the hell is going on? Well, we're about to tell you. K-F-I. K-O-S-T-H-D-2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live everywhere on the IR Radio app. New team members. I'm Brian Bruman, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A nonprofit has partnered with the Santa Ana Police Department to address a spike in domestic violence cases caused by the pandemic. The group, Human Relations, says domestic violence calls in Orange County spiked 25% during the pandemic. The Ride Along with the Advocate is unique. It's the only partnership like this in Orange County. CEO Maricela Rios-Faust says the nonprofit trained 125 cops in Santa Ana on nuances like don't ask a mom what happened near the kids. There's always one child that maybe the abuser will look to and say, like, did your mom tell the officers anything about me hitting her? And so it's a way of re-victimizing. She says the advocates also provide immediate options if the person needs a way out of a violent situation. In Orange County, Corbin Carson, KFI News. News brought to you by Ruder Hero. People in Carson have filed a class action lawsuit against a warehouse owner and a tenant over the foul sense that's been lingering over the city. This woman who lives in the area says her family is concerned about exposure to the odor. I have taken off work two days to get myself well enough to go to work. Lawyers say a recent warehouse fire caused hand sanitizer and debris to get into the Dominguez Channel, which created the sketch. The lawsuit is asking for payment for hotel costs and medical bills for people who've been impacted. Former L.A. City Councilman Bernie Parks says the indictment of Mark Ridley Thomas wasn't a matter of if, but a matter of when. Parks outlined a series of what he calls ethical missteps by Ridley Thomas, which included previous encounters with the FBI. Parks says when he left council in 2015, he noted that he worked more closely with criminals during his time in politics than he did while working at the LAPD. Park says he's not surprised by the charges, and despite what Ridley Thomas may say, neither is he. In fact, Park says, no one should be surprised. Parks also added it's important to note that it is possible to be black, spend decades in government, and never catch even a whiff of a personal corruption investigation or an indictment. He's Gregory K. if I knew. A biomedical group in Pasadena will be studying the long-term effects of COVID-19. Dr. Ken Schreiner is with the Huntington Medical Research Institute and says they want to look at how the virus impacts vital organs, among other things. The brain, the lungs, the heart, and systemic symptomatology such as chronic fatigue and uh, myalgias and so forth. Schreiner says post-COVID disease is now recognized as a disability under the ADA, and those with symptoms for more than 56 weeks are considered long haulers. The Biden administration has yet to punish Border Patrol agents who were accused of whipping Haitian migrants at the, te at the Texas border. The uh, left's criticism of law enforcement for doing the very job we've asked them to do and making outrageous accusations which can't be proven and which have later been debunked. Republican Senator John Cornyn says in September, Biden said people will pay after seeing a video showing Border Patrol agents on horses confronting migrants at the U.S. border in Texas. The results of the investigation have yet to be released. Cornyn says the Border Patrol deserves an apology, but doubts one is coming. The Justice Department is investigating lending abuse in the housing sector. We are wasting no time getting to work. The Civil Rights Division currently has several open redlining investigations. And through partnerships with U.S. Attorney's offices, the Department expects to open more in the months ahead. Attorney General Merrick Garland says the practice of redlining involves discriminatory practices by lending institutions that hurt minority communities. Garland says redlining violates federal law. We're going back to that big closure on the 101. 
Okay, it's downtown LA. Both sides of the 101 freeway shut down all weekend long. Between the 5 and the 10 until around 6 o'clock Monday morning. Your best alternate is the 5 or the 110 freeway instead. Ongoing problems now getting worse in the Cajon Pass. Multiple crashes there. They've made some progress in terms of clearing those cars out of lanes on the 15 freeway southbound side before the 138 and the northbound side before the scale. A couple of different incidents there. But now they're saying because of the dense fog, they're actually going to have to run escorts through the pass. Expect heavy delays. Ontario on the 15 North transition to the 10 East. The crash there with the big rig involved as well. Watch for the to try to make the crossover. KFI in the sky helps us there faster. I'm Robert Zabucki. When it comes to your identity and keeping it safe, the folks at LifeLock want to make sure that your information stays secure. So let's say during the pandemic, or even now, you're working overtime. You're saving your money. You're paying off your debt. And now some identity thief wants to steal your information. This is why LifeLock by Norton helps monitor your information and alerts you to potential identity threats. And if you do become a victim, a dedicated U.S.-based specialist will be there to help fix it. Now, no one can prevent all identity theft to monitor every transaction, every business. But when identity thieves try to take what's yours, you don't have to take it lying down because there's LifeLock. Save up to 25% off your first year. Call 800 LifeLock or go to LifeLock.com promo code handle. That's LifeLock.com promo code handle or call 800 LifeLock promo code handle. Once again, that's promo code handle for 25% off at LifeLock.com. Southland weather from KFI. Low clouds and drizzle this morning with a chance of rain. It's going to be partly cloudy this afternoon. Mid 60s to low 70s at the beaches. Mid 60s to low 70s in Metro LA and OC. Mid 60s to low 70s in the Inland Valleys and high 50s. So, excuse me. Mid 60s to low 70s in the Inland Empire also. Right now, 61 degrees in Brea. 57 degrees in San Clemente. 61 in Silver City and 57 in Pasadena. We lead local live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Brian Green. Custom Home Builder, Custom Home Designer, here with you live like I am every weekend, Saturdays from 6 to 8, Sundays from 9 to 11. Welcome, welcome to the second hour of our fine program. What are we all about here? I'm just here to help, uh, to be an advocate for you uh, with your construction issues as you wrestle with construction-related issues on your home. A design mentor for you, oh yeah. Uh, because when it comes to transforming your house, if you're really going to do it right, design matters most. And uh, just a friendly voice in your Saturday morning, helping you build yourself a more beautiful home, hopefully a more beautiful life, and to do it all more affordably and more artfully than you ever imagined. We are having a conversation this morning, you and I, whether you knew it or not, about uh, decoding uh, contemporary homes. Contemporary homes are a bit of a mystery to a lot of people. And uh, we've explained some of the reasons why. Uh, lesson one was that no, it's not a modern house, it's a contemporary house. I'm not going back there again. I'm just, you know, we covered that in the first hour. It's not a modern house, it's a contemporary house. Modern is now officially a historical term. Yeah, it, it wasn't. Uh, lesson two, uh, contemporary homes may appear simple but actually they're just the opposite. Uh, they're very complex homes. And the finishing of a contemporary home is uh, quite an art form, an understated art form as it is, uh, but an art form nonetheless. We don't have the moldings and the trims and all the ornate details to hide mistakes behind, literally, to hide the, or to distract us from uh, uneven walls or uh, uneven ceiling lines where they join uh, with the wall, things like that. Don't have those things. Clean lines means close to perfection is what's required. Otherwise, uh, when you have just a clean, plain surface, any little dimple, ripple, pit, bump, super visible. And so the finishing of contemporary home surfaces 
uh, takes quite a bit of craftsmanship to make that simple flat plane surface. So uh, surprising. Not a simple home. Not a simple home at all. And the engineering of a home like that, uh, when we're replacing, let's say, a wall, which normally, like, you know, holds up the house, with a gigantic piece of glass, takes some creative engineering to be able to do that as well. Now, I get it. Lesson three is, like any style of home, there are a lot of bad contemporary attempts out there. There are. And Tina points them out to me every time. We drive by one, don't you? Uh, we both point out. It, 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 it kind of annoys us. Uh, because contemporary homes sort of stand out as they are. And I think the reason why maybe it annoys us more so than normal is because they're already uh, standing out a bit. Uh, and so they're clearly, they can get really boxy, uh, clunky. Uh, a contemporary home can be weirdly angular. Sometimes they can be fantastically angular. Other times, weirdly angular. What's the difference between, I don't, you know, some of it is in the eye of the beholder. I can tell you exactly what the difference is. That one is ugly and that one is beautiful. But uh, technically speaking, just for me to sit here and tell you why, eh, that's a little bit harder to go. Um, contemporary homes, because of their simplicity, because of their sort of minimalism, can feel cold to some people, impersonal, sterile, institutional, uh, storyless. Not, not story like there's no second story or third story. I mean story, like the story of a home, the character of a home. Some people feel like the contemporary home doesn't have a soul. We'll get to that. Um, and there are a lot of obtrusive, ugly, and uninspiring contemporary homes out there. And so that doesn't help at all. Now, let me be fair. There are a lot of obtrusive, ugly, and uninspiring traditional homes out there in the world as well. The fact of the matter is, when it comes to home art, residential architecture, uh, most homes are kind of... Uh, uh, Somewhat mediocre and uh, and quite a few are have been bold attempts and have just really not cleared the bar. And as a result, bold turns into ugly very fast. None more so true than with a contemporary house. There are architects who are sort of, sort of just I don't know uh, fiddling around with angles and shapes. Uh, without rhyme or reason seemingly behind them. They just say, well, you know, if I just take this series of boxes and I stack them on top of each other, boom, look at you. You've got a modern home, a contemporary home. Yeah. And not, not necessarily the way it works out. So let's move from these negatives, shall we? And let's talk about the magic that happens. And there is that. That happens when a contemporary home gets done right. First of all, uh, if there was one thing, if you had to twist my arm and say, Dean, you only get one word to characterize the great benefits of a contemporary home, what would it be? Well, I would pick this word, light. Light, light, and more light. Nothing uh, characterizes contemporary architecture more so, in my opinion, or nor is more important than the fact that there is way more glass uh, on a contemporary Sorry, home than in a traditional home. And for me, that is always a good thing because ambient light, outdoor light, the light of day, getting inside our structures, moving around, reflecting back and forth, and in, nothing better. Light and view, light, light, and more light. And so there is a lot of glass in a contemporary